I'm Kelvin Locklear, a Carolina farm boy who saw his dad's trucks as a vehicle to achieve my dreams. Trucking brought April and I together, but us and the boys decided to walk our own path. We formed America's premier commercial vehicle custom shop, moved it to Race City, USA, and hired our friends, NASCAR champs, Ted Musgrave and Ron Hornaday, to help our crew provide a white picket dream for those who caught a highway home. Other custom shops say this work can't be done. At Outcast Customs, we say it can. Like the trucks rolling into Outcast Customs, our crew is made up of some crazy parts. But these characters provide the unique spin that shapes each build. Our shop foreman is Ted Musgrave, a NASCAR champion driver. Same goes for Ron. He's a four-time champ and a jack of all trades. I'll tell you, these guys sure know trucks. Justin is our specialist in the fab shop. Steve has learned how to come through in the clutch when we're full throttle towards the deadline. My wife, April, handles a ton of the graphics that add spice to each custom order we bring into the shop. Driving the business just comes natural to me. A friend of mine named Randy called. He's the president and CEO of Detroit Radiator. He and his wife, they're gonna be delivering an old truck that needs a new look. Last year we did a trailer for DRC. This year we're doing a tractor. A lot of their business comes from demo shows and conventions, so we're thrilled to complete the updated look for them. Over 75 years ago, Detroit Radiator Corporation began as a small regional manufacturer. Randy came in as CEO 10 years back, and now they're traveling the country. This overhaul will allow them to show off the 26 styles of all-metal radiator cores for the biggest and hardest working trucks and machinery out there. For a company that's built itself on keeping engines cool, I'm pumped to build them a hot new ride. I live for these moments. I got a crew chomping at the bit, ready to get this truck done. I got a friend of mine getting ready to roll up outside in his big rig, and it needs some big outcast attention. Remade it. Here we go. See if Wild Man's here. Every time a new build comes in, it's always a little bit different, a little unique. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I need you to fix it up like you did my trailer, but it turned out absolutely beautiful. I want it really tricked out super nice so it goes with the trailer. I want it to be a showpiece. So I'm Good. really excited. I know you can do it. We want to get out to the American trucker. We want them to see our products. Uh, we don't want them just to see a picture in a magazine or you have somebody describe it over the phone. We want to get the products to them um, in a great looking truck and a great looking trailer. Using the DRC letters. Uh -huh. And uh, so we're going to go with like Dr. Cool. And that's going to be the name. Oh, Dr. Cool, DRC. Everybody at the whole company is excited about it. They can't wait to see it. And uh, it's, it's going to be a, a really cool thing for Detroit Radiator. I call this a tired truck. That thing's got a lot of miles on it. I love that it's been rolling that long, but anything that's been rode that hard that long needs a facelift. The first step in updating this dinosaur is getting rid of that purple paint. Then it's new fenders, hood, and new stacks for sure. A new seat will give a smooth ride, and a little customizing gives the profile a low riding look. And of course, this hardworking rig deserves a new radiator. 
Calvin and April got some really cool plans for Dr. Cool. There's gonna be a lot of work, so I'm gonna go get my guys and we're gonna get to work. What do we got going now? All right, guys, we got ourselves a 2000 Kenworth here. Needs a little loving, needs a little work. Let's get at it. First thing we gotta do, we gotta start, bumpers got to be taken off. We're gonna replace the hood with a new hood. We're gonna change the radiator out. It's gotta go to paint, so we gotta take the stacks off. Mirrors, uh, breathers, steps, quarter fenders. We got a lot to do, so grab your tool, boys. Let's go. Back there, we're gonna put it. Once again, we got a lot of work we got to do to take this old ride and make it into this bad, beautiful ride here. Really, the only input we had from Randy on this was I like red, and I want to connect with my customers. So we pretty much had free reign on um, kind of the design process and where we wanted to go with it. Um, he wanted like a red hot rod truck that customers would really look at and go, wow, that's cool, you kind of understand me. This dingy look through here ain't going to cut it with mm -hmm. Randy or me. I've got this all on my spreadsheet, so we'll change hoods. We're gonna paint the grill bars. We're gonna change the bumper to nice, shiny stainless bumper. Exactly Cover this right. in stainless and add the painted accents. She's all about putting everything down, jotting it all in a line, and me, I go off the hip, man. I mean, it's if it looks cool, it's going on the truck, you know. We'll worry about everything else later. This right here is what Randy wants his customers to be looking at. This right here, man, it's just old. It's just, we gotta put it over here. And by the way, keep your spreadsheet to yourself there because this isn't a truck off an assembly line here. Spreadsheets don't work with this stuff. It's all about the bill. Yeah, but they have to have a bill plan or they Who? don't know. They gotta go wait on you to get off the phone. Well, have a bill, it. let's call it a bill plan and not a spreadsheet. Is that better? That works. All right, well, let's go. Come on. <laughs> Plans sometimes have to change. I don't give a damn who you are. Hey, you can get your permit. You can go take the test and you can pass the test next week. Mm -hmm. There's been no bloodshed, no black eyes. I think we're doing good. package says from your mom? My mom? Yeah. I haven't been at this gig very long. I was talking to my mom about it, so I said, Ma, I'm gonna eat some special tools. She said, hang on, I'm gonna send you something. I can't wait to see what it's gonna be. Have a bird and a stick or something, or? Ah, oh, and a mouse with... With poop? Poop. <laughs> what in? Oh, wait a minute, okay. Wow. New job, new tools. Monkey wrench. It's not a bird. It's a crowbar. <laughs> oh yeah, and a ratchet. Oh. Close. Close. Wow. We made a plan. We got the truck. Now it's time to get to work. There's the frame covers there. Let us sit right up on the truck here. This will work out good. The guys at Talladega Fiberglass, they're great at making one-of-a-kind pieces, and that's why it makes Outcast Customs second to none. Here's our rear fenders. These things is massive. These custom fenders here, they're the key to giving Dr. Cool that one-of-a-kind, low-riding look. Hey, it looks better already. How's the look? That's some pretty nice stuff there. How do you want to mount it? Well, we're gonna have to get some 2 by 2 square tubing, and, uh, it runs from side to side to kind of help balance the fenders. They're so heavy, it's kind of like a cantilever. Drop some tubes down off the chassis, mount them up. Pretty simple, it just takes about four to six hours to do it. You'll be able to get it done in maybe two, two and a half. <laughs> uh, Kelvin creates these deadlines. It's my job to meet them deadlines. <laughs>
So normally when we do a build, we sit down with the customer and we list everything that they want. And they sign off on it, we sign off on it. That way everybody has a good vision and a good plan. Do you want the fifth wheel cover? Yes, I do want the fifth wheel cover. What about cover. the little air cleaner? I do want the air cleaner, thanks. Okay. And have you told Randy you're changing the bumper to paint it and not stainless? Uh, I've called for him. So we had planned on like a stainless bumper on the front of it, and now Kelvin's decided to do a painted bumper. <laughs> Another plan we had started and Kelvin changed. <laughs> Plans sometimes have to change. I don't give a damn who you are. My plan changed. Customers pay the bill, though. Yeah, but it's got to look cool. When people see me coming through the shop, they're like, oh my goodness, here comes Kelvin. He's going to change some plans. Well, when I look at these vehicles, it's all about the flow of them. I want something to look the way I would have it look if I was driving it. And uh, by the way, the buck stops here, so if I don't like it, it's going to get changed. Steve was never able to get his license, so we told him if he passed the exam, we would fix his car for him so he could drive it. So you learn how to study for the test and you can get your license? <laughs> there we go with that. Huh? Yeah, I studied last night for the little test. How long did you study? About three hours, to be honest. You studied three hours? Yes, sir. So our bet's still on. Next oh, Tuesday. Yeah. All day? Next Tuesday, we're going to go down here and we're going to get your license. I don't back down from nothing. What do you mean you don't back down from nothing? I don't know. I don't, what you you gonna, I, I don't want to know one thing. What's the reaction on your good thing when she looks at you and says, Stephen, you failed? I car. found out they got an exit through the back door, and I just <laughs> walk right up the back door and go down the street. Y'all gonna be standing out there for a while. I'm gonna pass it, though. You sure? If this is gonna be on TV, I'm gonna pass it. You wanna put $100 on? Oh, no, you're going a little too high for my budget. Let's put 50 We're gonna put 50 on it. I should have just, like, stopped real quick and said 200 and pound it really quick, and it would have been a bet. Well, well if 50. you wanna go too, I'll go too. No, I ain't gonna go too, man. You trying to break me. Well, you just said you wanted to go too. So we're going $50. 50 You're going to get your permit, you're going to go take the test, and you're going to pass the test next Tuesday. Mm-hmm. All right. Mad Dog's been working the guys hard in the shop, burning the candle at both ends, so I figured we'd light a few in his honor. You know, we expect a lot of work out of these guys, and at some point in the day, you got to punch out and go have a little fun. I really wasn't expecting to see a birthday party here in the midst of all this hard work. But the guys, I'll tell you what, we work hard, we stay together, and we play hard. Ron keeps giving everybody a hard time back there, so I just want to make sure that Ron can have his cake and wear it too. What we do like I do my grandkids and just shove his face in it. <laughs> it's not even my birthday. We've got to get a lot of work done. Uh, and this little thing right here will take a little stress off everybody, show that we're all a group, we're all going to have fun. Uh, when it gets down to it, like I say, they'll work just as hard as we're going to have fun. It's on. I heard it. It's on, guys. Oh. <laughs> on the outside. Steve seems to be a happy-go-lucky guy, but really, he's had a tough life. When I was around 13, my dad passed away. Um, that hit me hard. All right, the project we're on right now is shortening up these boxes on both sides of the truck. Reason being is with the small stacks, there was plenty of room. Now we're going to the big, huge ones. Looks cool. But we don't have any room, so we got to cut these boxes down five inches on both sides. It's a little bit of a trick, but that's all right. I'll show you how we're going to do it in a hurry, though. I took this job with Kelvin because it sounds fun and exciting. And now that, I get a chance to work with my son, Justin. He's, uh, he's been all right. I mean, he's usually kind of a little hard to get along with, but I mean, he knows uh, he knows I know my stuff. I respect him because he's done this a long time. So um, he's actually learning a lot right now too. And I've never worked with him like this before. He's always had a job somewhere else. I've always had a job somewhere else. This is the first time we actually worked together. The more we work together, the better off we've uh, we've been getting along. Back in the day, 
We just bunch of heads all the time now. A lot of times he gets stumped on something. I can help him. I get stumped on something. He can help me, so it's, it's turning out okay. He's, uh, he's actually a really good kid, to tell you the truth. He works hard, so uh, there's been no bloodshed, no black eyes. I think we're doing good. Perfect. Demo's done, prep is done. It's time to get some paint put on this truck. All right, so we blanked this out a sheet here. So the dimensions we need for the battery box. Put a couple bends in it. Bend us a 90, about 3 quarters of an inch, a couple 45s, a couple 58 degrees. Form it all up. Put some nut certs into the side of the battery box in there. Put some hex bolts in it, and should be able to hide all the batteries and everything else. Justin has fabbed us up some really cool battery box covers, and I'll tell you what, man, this thing sure is shining and looking slick. All right, Steve, I need you to uh, trace out these holes right here so I can figure out where on the stainless we need to punch our uh, holes for the bolts. Okay. <clears throat> there are some jobs that I struggle with because of my size or inexperience, but there are jobs that I'm good at that the guys can't do. Housekeeping. It didn't come out good. Uh, I can see that one and that one. We're good. That's good. Yep. Yeah, because like I said, I had to hold it up there. You just can't. Uh, yeah. Can't reach in there. Maybe when it's smaller. Up. It's good back there. The hole is a little bit bigger in it. Yeah, I'm actually gonna drill that one out. Put the nut certs in it. All right, we're All good right. to go. You need my help anymore? On the outside, Steve seems to be a happy-go-lucky guy, but really, he's had a tough life. And I'll tell you what, me and the guys, we're glad to give him a chance to stand on his own. When I was around 13, my dad passed away. Um, that hit me hard. I was in elementary school. And, um, and that's what made me probably stronger, too, to be honest with you. Uh, I was in a group home from when I was 13 to 18. I aged out. Ended up in the group home because I was abused when I, I was in the household with my stepdad. Um, me and my sisters got taken away from my mom. I don't blame my mom one bit because it's not her fault. Um, I might be small, but I'm, just, I'm a strong person. It's, it takes a lot to bring me down. Steve's got an awesome attitude. Um, with all that he's been through, it's just great to have him around. And you know, he's like, yeah, I went through all that, but look where I'm at now. You know, when I was a kid, I got burnt real bad. And going to school, everybody stared at me and made fun of me. And I think he's going through the same thing, but it don't seem to bother him. You really don't see someone who's had this tough life, who has what most people would look as a disability, and be able to come it and just walk around and sing and whistle. I really like that about him. Hey, what were you singing? Which one? I heard you singing a while ago. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Is that the only song you know? No. What else do you know? Santa Claus is coming to town. I mean, do you only know Christmas songs? You don't know, like, something else? I do, but... Well, you know. I'm in the spirit of Christmas right now for some reason. Sometimes we have a bad attitude or have a bad day, but yet you look over there and there's Steve right beside you doing anything. So that's what I do. I go get a lot of church, do whatever I need. I'm not ashamed to get that stuff, you know, but I'll just, like, cause I love being short. His attitude around the shop makes everybody kind of smile. Just his character, um, I think it just, it's an uplifting for everybody. Everybody wants to work around Steve-O. You know, it just, he's, uh, he, he's that, that kid what just makes you smile. That was funny, he just did. You know, the joking around, you know, it doesn't bother me. They say little jokes, I say big jokes, mix it all up, you know, it's, we're just all jokers and I love it. So, you know, it's been great here. This is a stressful job. We got deadlines to make and all that stuff and you get a little, little runt coming around there and, and making a joke about it. There, there's two hours of your day just thinking about what he said. He's definitely a, a plus of that. Outcast customs. I don't know what it is. It's just I'm a happy person all the time, man. I like my, I like who I am, and if you don't like me, no well, but I like, I love who I am, and it's just great. I love my life.
We got a major problem here at Outcast Customs, and the problem is the paint. Frankly, it looks like Me and Ron is going to play for who cleans the pink bathroom toilets. Hey, Ted, I wanted to come up here today and just kind of wanted to sit down with you, see where we're at. Are we catching up on some bills? Are we uh, still behind? Uh, I got bad news. Um, right now, the Detroit radiator truck came out of the paint booth, but it didn't turn out. Uh, it's got some orange peel in it. It's got some runs in it. It's unacceptable. We're going to have to repaint that truck, believe it or not. <clears throat> That's going to put us a couple weeks behind. I mean, is it something we could buff, or is it got to be uh, repainted? I looked at it. You can't. Uh, it's The buffing's not going to do it. They're actually going to have to re-sand it down. Now, they don't have to re-sand it all the way. They can lightly sand it and shoot another coat of uh, red on it, and then hopefully that'll lay down better. But uh, it, it, it's got to go back. We can't, we can't ship stuff out like this. Commercial vehicle work, it takes the normal custom job and multiplies it by 10. So that means the problems, they get multiplied too. That's why painting this truck again sets us back a whole week. I need to find Bob and find out what went wrong. Okay. Uh, we got a major problem here at Outcast Customs, and the problem is, is the paint. Uh, it's not the paint product, it's the painter. I should be able to look in that uh, paint and see a slick, smooth me. I look like an orange right now when I'm looking at all the dimples and everything. And then around the rivets and everything right here, we got runs. Well, there's a, there's a rivet or two, but that's... Uh, I've never seen a big truck painted that didn't have a rivet with a run on it. We're all about having our customer and our product hitting the road at second to none. We're here to put a quality product on the vehicle with a quality shine. Right now, frankly, it looks like and I'm not happy. I'm not happy with the excuses I was given. There's no such thing as excuses. I mean, what do you think would have caused uh, what we got there? Lack of knowledge of uh, product we're using. I never used it in my life. And had, had never, had right. never, didn't know the properties of it, and didn't get any advice to start with. Well, the the situation is that we we've, we've got a, a new product in the building I've never even seen before. That's my excuse, anyhow. And um, putting the clear on it, we were trying to get the clear to flow out and cover up the thickness of the base color, which again, I'd never seen. I'd never used the paint booth back there. It had never been used before. And the uh, paint equipment that I was painting with I'd never used before. Uh, I hate being thrown in a pressure kettle uh, with lack of knowledge. Uh, I mean, I've been painting for almost 45 years and feel like I know what I'm doing. Uh, I hope he understands that. I'm just a little disappointed that uh... He didn't uh, take his experience and man up and say, let's redo it, let's do it right. I, it's my name on the line, too. I did my best, and it just didn't turn out the way we wanted it, and so we're going to go back in and do it again. When it says Outcast Customs, it says Kelvin Locklear, too, and I've worked too damn hard to let something like this go out. We're not going to shut Outcast Customs down because of this paint problem, but we got Justin over here in the fab shop. He's fabbing up some really cool panels for this truck. Hey, man, he's going to bring it. And now we have two cab extensions. On to the next project. With Justin over here in the fab shop doing uh, some really cool cabin sleeper panels, making them extra low, giving it that hot rod look, Dr. Cool is going to be styling going down the road. So we need to go. Do you know what stainless pistons were when we took off this? I did not take them off. Is there, I mean, there is some around? Yeah, they may be in the back room. Probably need to hold one of them up and probably add like eight inches to it, seven, eight inches down. I just figured we wouldn't want to go any farther than the tank. All right. Yeah, I'll find them, and then if we have to, we'll take some bend out of it here and put a little bit more in here to bring yeah. these things more on an angle. 
Well, I'm really proud of Justin the way he's picking these things up. And this type of work takes immense amount of uh, thorough detail. Uh, there's a lot of precision here. So uh, a keen eye will make it or break it. watching Steve all week long just hide in different places studying for that driving exam. Steve's definitely taking advantage every moment he's out working. Put his nose in that handbook. I'm very stressed about this driving exam. I really don't like exams, so I'm going to throw the DRC truck on the Gaza and let them deal with all the stress by themselves. Kelvin is fuming about the paint, and Randy from Detroit Radiator is on his way to check out the progress of the build. So I thought it would help lighten the mood to open up Ron's weekly poker game. It's a chance for all of us around here to blow off some steam. They went work for it. Ooh, all mine. Woo so, uh, so uh, how's the truck coming? It's coming along real good. The guys got it in red today, and uh, I know you came down tonight and uh, ready to install the charge air cooler, radiator, and AC condenser tomorrow. So we got everything set up so we can. Get that done, and uh, I hope you eat your Wheaties because it's going to be a big job. Yeah, I, I don't think it'll be a problem from my side. Even playing cards, Calvin wants to be the boss. I think we're going to make a little wager with him, see if he can work something else besides his mouth around him. Next hand, what we're going to okay. do, me and Ron is going to play for who cleans the pink bathroom toilets. Ron always talks big, but I ain't about to clean nobody's bathroom. Flip the glass card there, lady. We had a lot of people at the table, and I was actually feeling really good about a pair of tens. No, you didn't. Hold on, what do you have? Uh, I got me that little straight going. Two tens are fine with blackjack, but not poker. Are you clean the toilet? You know. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks, and I'm the only one gotta go clean the toilet. All right, Bob. Let me know, how was it? Today's the big day. We're heading to the DMV with Steve. So today we're going to put together these air swimmers and have a little fun with the kids. They're these helium filled balloons that are remote controlled and we'll see how it goes. Typical Kelvin, he never reads directions, he just goes for it. And you know most things have processes and you have to do one thing before the other. This goes forward. We got it, finally. But just trying to do things with Kelvin like that is aggravating. Right, let me slap you. You already did. Turn it over. We... Turn it over. We're going to make it stay still. Who needs uh, directions when you got a friend like this right here? I mean, he turned out beautiful. I mean, it's time now to go see if this thing's going to swim. Whoa! It is a shark! <laughs> takes the pressure off, it gives us some time with the kids without having to think about trucks or builds or people in the shop and uh, kind of gives us a, a break, less stress, just time to have fun and play. You got it. Ooh, nice. Kids, they thought it was great. It was an activity. It was something they hadn't seen before. We thought it was funny. And uh, we're still laughing about it, so that's what this family activity is all about. It's so fun for our kids to be able to be a part of our business, and then we go be a part of their lives by being a kid again. When I first seen the paint job on Dr. Cool, I could tell that the color and the texture, they were all wrong. At that point in time, I was about ready to fire Bob, but probably wasn't all his fault. I had asked Calvin if we could get DuPont to come down and check out our shop and see what kind of uh, painting conditions we were working in with this product. And turns out that the, uh, the paint uh, is very sensitive to the temperature. Uh, having diesel fumes in the room is not good. Uh, and uh, come to find out, 90 degrees would have been the perfect thing for us to be painting in. 
Hopefully this time when we paint it, uh, the paint will lay down real slick and uh, Randy and the folks at Detroit Radiator is going to be happy with the paint job now. It's a lot better this time around. I'll tell you what, it's, uh, this is what you want to see when you're looking at paint. I mean, uh, it's going on slick and, uh, whoo, before it uh, looked like we were unrolling oranges and uh, landed on top, but it's damn sure going on looking good now, so looks like this time's a charm. Well, the paint is finally done and dried and not a moment too soon because Randy's personally going to install his custom radiator that DRC built for that show truck. I wanted to be here because this is where, that's how I started, working on trucks. Um, and that's what I love to do. I like working with my hands. I like coming up with new ideas, better ideas. Uh, and and that's, that's what I like to do. So I was excited to come down and help out with our truck here that uh, we want to get on the show. Now what we're going to start on today is we're going to change out the air conditioning condenser, the air to air cooler, and the radiator. It's all in one big package unit. It makes it kind of nice when it's all one piece. We've got brand new stuff. It's a good thing because this one's leaking. We don't really think it's going to last very much longer. Well, what we did here is we put a, it's a flat fin type core. It's an industrial core. It's not a CT core that some people call, which is kind of an automotive type radiator. Um, it's much more robust and it's made for the road. Hey, I got some new, brand new stainless steel pipes. Oh, you don't want this one? No, that's nasty. Huh. Yeah. Well, I'm glad no. you showed up now because I was about ready to bolt yeah. that sucker on. Now, this is a brand new product line we just started carrying. Um, it's stainless steel. It's the last set of pipes this truck will ever need. All right, so we can get rid of this thing? That is ugly. I mean, that yeah. looks like something that came out of my bathroom or something. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. It's that's pretty cool. Look at the difference of that. I mean, the shine, the way it looks. Yeah, Great product, guy. Great. Appreciate it, Randy. Awesome. Thanks again. We'll keep her shined up for you. Thanks, Tom. We work with truckers all the time with different problems they come along with, and because of our manufacturing facility right here in the States, as probably well abroad somewhere, we're able to custom build exactly what they need that's going to work in their atmosphere in their truck. The guys in the paint shop, they sure have busted their butts to catch this truck back up. But you know what? It's probably more or less my fault because if I'd have checked in on them a little earlier, we would have been able to get this truck done the first time around and not have had this problem. All right, Bob. Let me know. How was it? Well, it's way slicker than it was, but, uh, you know, uh, I'd love to be perfect. Every time I do something, I want it to be perfect. And, and we're really, really close, but uh, uh, we'll buff around on it a little bit and, and make it closer. The most important thing around here is we meet our deadlines, but we give them a damn good product. And, hey, man, we all hung in there, we got it done, and thank you and the guys for just, hey, just manning up and put your big boy shorts on and let's go to damn work. Today is the big day. We're heading to the DMV with Steve. All right, we're here, man. All right, dude. Well, it's all about you right now. Oh, yeah. Well, hey. All Get right. her done, son. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. I didn't get it. Oh, man, come on. Dude, as much as you studied. We're really excited here at the shop because Randy and Kim is going to be here any minute, and they're going to let us know if we brought the cool that the doctor ordered. Man, I've been a 
hundred people in this place. I'm gonna kind of be a little down if, uh, if Steve Dutton uh, get his license and uh, get his permit so we can start to work with him because we've looked forward to this. We've looked forward to being able to put the pedals in his car and, and get his seat done. You know, it's, it's not about driver's license. So, or his permit, it's about independence. Now he's got a job, he's got money, and no way to go. I think we're gonna make it work for him. I didn't get it. Oh, man, come on. I didn't get it. Guess Dude, I'll as get... much as you studied. I guess I owe you $60 now. Let me pull it out of my pocket. You owe me $60, buddy. You suck! <laughs> Man. I was nervous for no reason, I guess. I'm happy you got these things, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's too. time to get everything with your car done so you can start learning to drive, dude. That's yeah. what's next. Put your signals on. Oh, so you're gonna tell me I gotta... Hey, you're, now you're gonna tell me how to drive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. Hey, no, no, no. It was a fifty dollar bet. You trying to take ten off of it? I charge you ten dollars extra. Wow, what great news for Steve. That's awesome. But we may have to hold off in a celebration for a while because we still got some parts to assemble and meet this deadline. gap right here. So all these are going to have to be remade like another three inches longer. I thought you said things would be long enough, big guy. I just didn't give the right measurements when we were talking. So remember we said eight inches mm -hmm. here, and I actually went, this is actually eight and a half. Kelvin, originally, a lot of your Kenworth hoods come a little bit closer to this body line right in here. So we actually came, when I built them, he was uh, telling me that I should just be able to come ahead about eight inches. But like I said, the hood came down and the hood actually stopped about two inches short. So we remade them and like I said, it was actually a good thing because we put the hood on there and the hood actually comes down a bit farther. So this one we actually tapered down a little bit that way. It kind of gives it more of a contour, lets everything flow that way instead of just having a box and then having the hood go straight down. For now, we're actually at a, at a decent stopping point where I can probably let the interior people start on their, on their half of it. So much of the focus on these jobs is the outside of the truck, but the heart of it all is the inside. Well, I'm a truck driver from way back. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be truck drivers. They're never home and they're always alone. With the dash, the seat, and the steering wheel done, now we can focus on all the fun stuff. This is the Kicker Solo Barrick L710. It's a massive 10 inch speaker to go with this massive truck. Dual voice quell, so it can be wired in a variety of wiring combinations. We're gonna put it in a ported enclosure. A ported enclosure has a tuned port that tunes the back wave in phase with the front wave to boost the output, kind of like turbocharging an engine. That gives it a lot more output, and these two tents are gonna devastate this cab. It's gonna sound incredible both inside and outside, so let's put it in. This is fun. Now that we got the interior finished in this truck, we can stick a fork in this thing. It's done. This Kenworth truck really stands out because it made it low profile. The low riding bumper and fender package did the trick. A rich coat of red shows off that new hood, cabin sleeper. 
a new fifth wheel cover, tires, LED lights, and custom details like the battery box cover give a good look as well as improved function. Chopping down those battery boxes, let us put on monster stacks. And the custom chrome details make this truck pop. Inside is as good as the outside. A booming audio system, redesigned seats and sleeper, have this ride ready to get back out on the road. The guys put a lot of work into this. Kelvin and I have got a lot of time spent on the design and analyzing the books, but it all comes down to the delivery. We're really excited here at the shop because Randy and Kim is going to be here any minute, and they're going to let us know if we brought the cool that the doctor ordered. What do you think? I love it. Awesome, Calvin. Absolutely beautiful. You guys done a great job, huh? Oh, man. That is just beautiful. I love the red. The red is it's out there. It's beautiful. It's bright. It, it shouts DRC without shouting DRC. So we really love that part of it. Oh, it looks great. It's bright red. He loves red. It's shiny, and he likes that flash. It's a very good quality job. Absolutely love it. That's exactly what we wanted. I can't wait to get this at shows and, and show it off with our trailer and products. It's just gorgeous. Absolutely. I love the little DRC cutouts that you put in there. That is, that's beautiful. And Detroit Radiator Truck, yeah. When it's going down the road, you spot it, you'll know exactly who it is. Makes you feel like you really did something. Makes you want to come to work every day, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it turned out really good. I wouldn't change a thing. I love exactly the way it is. It's not over the top, but it's got that real nice custom look to it, so it's, it's exactly what we wanted. It, uh, it, it shows our company well. This has been somewhat of a test. Not so much of what we can do, but how we can get it executed. Because, you know, we put our reputation on the line each and every time we build something, and this gives us a chance to show it off. The reason we unlock the doors around here every day is to have satisfied customers. And I'm satisfied because Dr. Cool is going to be going down the road for several miles to come. You're going to be good on your mat. Oh, Have man. fun cleaning that one, buddy. Spots over there. What is this? That's because your girls in there splattering everywhere. What is this? So your first time cleaning? 